Hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to discuss about chi square test of independence. Chi square test of independence is of great significance when it comes to hypothesis testing because this test helps you in answering a simple question whether two variables or two factors are dependent upon each. So, for example, let's say someone is claiming that sales and discount on the products are dependent upon each other. If you give, as you raise the discount, the sales also. Now, to check that claim, we can use this kind of a hypothesis. So, this is of, because of which, this is of great significance, right? So, in today's video, we are going to discuss more about chi square test of independence, where we are going to establish the hypothesis, and then we are going to either reject or accept. So, without any further delay, let's get started. Okay. So, as we discussed that it is used to check whether two groups are statistically independent, right? Whether two groups are statistically independent or dependent upon each other. So, here the null hypothesis and alternative always remain the same. So, for example, we are saying that company wants to understand if there is any relationship between customer segment and churn. Now, churn is whether... Uh, a customer is still, you know, uh, with the company or he has switched to some other sort of brand, right? So, for example, a person who was buying Nike before, now he has switched to, uh, let's say, Adidas, right? So, that's a churn. So, basically, we are saying segment and churn are independent, right? So, basically, in generic, null hypothesis is always like that variables are independent, variables are independent, and an alternative will have variables are dependent. These two things, right? Now, if we take this analogy and try to, you know, come with the null and alternative hypothesis for this example, then we can say segment and churn are independent, and here we can say segment and churn are dependent. This will be an alternative hypothesis, and this kind of a table will be given, right? Where you have, let's say, customer segment, and it is based upon the tenure of your customer. So, if it is a new customer, then the tenure will be in between 0 to 12 months. For developing, it will be 12 to 36. And for core, it will be more than 36. So here we have new developing and core. And then we have in new, how many have churned and how many we were able to. Similarly, in developing, we'll have how many are churned and how many we are able to retain. Same with core. And then this is total. In new, there are total 275 customers. In developing, 525 customers. And in core, 200 customers. And 94 has churned. 906 we are able to retain. And total customers were 1000. Now, we need to transform this table a bit to calculate chi scale statistics. So, first of all, this is customer segment and this is class. And how we are coming up with observed? Observed is given here in, in the table above. So, new and turn is 25 and 25 is given to us here as well. Similarly, new retain is 250 and 250 is given here, right, in the above table. Similarly, we are coming up we are converting, we are doing the transformation and converting everything into a row type of where we have every data in the row. And here we have observed. So this is known as observe. Once we have observed, we have a formula for calculating expected. Now, what is expected? The formula for calculating expected is row sum into column sum divided. So let's try to do it for new, for both churn and it. So for new, when it is churn, what is the row sum? So the row sum will be this one. This is the row sum and this is the column sum and this is the total sum. So what we are saying that it will be 275 into 94 divided by 1000. This will be just for new churn and this will be the expected value which is coming to 25.8. Similarly, when we are going to new retain, what we are saying will be saying this is our row sum, this is our column sum and this is again our total. It will become 275 75 into 906 divided by 1. So it is giving us 249.15. I'm hoping this, this is clear on how we are calculating the expected. Once you are calculating the expected, again, the formula is given to us. The chi-scale statistics is observed minus expected whole square divided by expected. And this is what is coming. Once we have this column, we are just, you know, taking the sum of it. Here we are just taking the sum, which is coming to 6.55. And this is the sum you can say. Let me write it. Sum is equals to 6.55. Now the question comes, how we are going to accept the result? So in chi-scale, if you have gone through some previous videos, chi-scale distribution seems like this. So it is always a right table. 
field test by default. How we are going to calculate critical value? We know that a significance level is 0 0.05 and degrees of freedom will be row minus 1 into column minus 1. So how many rows do we have here? Three rows and how many columns? Two columns. So degrees of freedom will be two. Just use this in the formula. Chi square dot inverse. Since it is right tail, we are saying one minus alpha degrees of freedom, which is giving the chi square critical value will be 5.99. We are saying our chi square statistics is greater than critical value, hence we are rejecting null. So segment and churn are dependent. But let me show you, let me show you this thing in a much more graphical manner. So what we are saying that this is our graph and this is our chi square distribution. This is our chi square critical. This is our critical. Right. Since it is a right tail test, so this becomes the rejection region. And this is what? This is 5.9. Now, what is our chi scale statistic? Our chi scale statistic is 6.55, somewhere which lies. So it is coming under the rejection region. Hence, we are saying that we need to reject a null hypothesis and the final conclusion will be segment and churn are dependent. So by using this test, this can help you in answering many, many business questions whether whenever you have to say, decide or uh, check a claim whether two things are dependent upon each other. So I'm hoping now you are very, very clear on how we can perform chi scale test of independence and what is the significance of the same in hypothesis testing. That's all in this video. If you like the video, kindly like, share and subscribe. Till then, happy learning.